Hello, it's Christ with the breakdown for torches. Torches? Really Christ? Well, I wasn't actually going to cover this, but this was requested by someone who bought my book, and I figured I might as well complete all the weapon classes. You can buy my book and contact me to request any video you like. Anyway, if you've scanned the message, you will realize that torches cannot be power stanced. Or more precisely, there is no power stance moveset for the torches. And all the torches have the same basic moveset, whether it is light attacks, heavy attacks, running attacks, rolling attacks, or jumping attacks, they're all the same. I do want to point something out though. The torches heavy attack and running heavy attack both stab forward, so you might think this is a piercing attack that can potentially do counter hit damage. But no, all of the torches moveset do strike damage. I guess torches just aren't pointy enough. Furthermore, all torches are unique and cannot be infused with other infusions or ashes of war, other than the no skill ash of war for torches with torch attack. You can clearly tell, these aren't really made as a powerful weapon choice. There isn't any different moveset to go over, but instead, let's take a look at the unique ashes of war. First of all, torch attack is an ash of war that attacks with your torch. Wow, 10 out of 10 description, right? You've outdone yourself. Okay. On a more serious note, this Ash of War punches the air if you attempt to use it from your main hand. Here, you can see me swap to a torch with Fire Breather on the main hand, and then the torch on the off hand overrides my main hand Ash of War with Torch Attack, sort of like parries on shields. Torch Attack is essentially the same as a heavy attack of the torch, and does not require any FP. The other two torches have a Fire Breathing Ash of War. The fire doesn't travel that far, even when you have a target, nor does it do great damage, so honestly, I would say either of the ashes are quite bad. The difference between Fires of Slumber and Fire Breather is that Fires of Slumber applies a sleep status effect, whereas the Fire Breather is raw damage. And here are the torches ranges. Alright. Let's go through the attack rating of the torches one by one, starting with the most basic torch. I will standardize all of them to use 50 and 75 points of investment, although some do hit their soft cap at a lower investment. First, one thing about all torches is that they are naturally split damage weapons. If you've never watched my defense calculation video, you should probably go watch it to understand more about defense and negation. But basically, split damage weapons tend to have higher AR because they have to go through defense twice. This means that compared to a weapon that isn't split damage and has the same amount of AR, a split damage weapon will do less damage, unless, of course, the enemy is particularly strong against the single damage source, which is often physical, and weak against the elemental source of the split damage weapon. Here, we see that the torch is a quality-ish weapon, or you will want to invest into dexterity instead of going for 80 strength soft cap. For torches in particular, I would say this is a detriment most of the time. Why? Because it makes it harder to find another weapon to use it with. Since there isn't a power stance moveset anyway, you probably want to find another weapon to use the torch with. Having a quality split means your best picks are other unique weapons only, because quality infusion is quite bad at meta PvP levels. And again, if you're running torches to begin with, I think you wouldn't want to use other weapons anyway because you're probably on a torch only run. So uh, I guess you can just ignore this point. The beast repellent torch has a passive that allows you to repel beasts. This passive works while the torch is in your offhand, while you two hand another weapon, just like other weapon passives. Here are its stats at the given stat level. Again, I'm using 50 and 75 points of investment. So these aren't exactly at the soft caps, which are a bit lower. But the main point is, this torch is basically an upgrade of the regular torch, so we can eliminate the regular torch. Next, the steel wire torch actually reaches a higher AR than the beast repellent torch. Even if you want to pair this with another king weapon, for example, and you only invest into dexterity rather than both strength and dexterity, this torch will still have a higher attack. So if you don't mind investing into dex instead of strength, this is straight up better than the beast repellent torch unless you want the torch attack ash of war. The sentry torch allows you to see enemies that are normally invisible. This is quite handy in PvE actually, and it also has the highest AR out of the torches on a full faith investment. This allows you to pair this torch with incantations, 
so you don't feel absolutely miserable when your opponent can just counter your entire torch setup with any other weapon by mindlessly attacking. Also, for PvE, this torch has holy attack instead of fire attack, so you will struggle greatly for endgame bosses. The good news is, you can substitute this torch with a Centrinus that also uses a full faith investment and has fire damage instead. Ghost Flame Torch is relatively short for an already short weapon class. It also doesn't have that high of an AR, but it does come with frost buildup. You can also fully invest into intelligence to maximize its AR, so you can pair this torch with Gunstone Staffs. And finally, the Centrina's torch with I guess what is supposed to be Centrina carved onto it. For a torch only build, this is probably your best bet for PvP. Something I do find interesting though is the Sword of Centrina has an intelligence requirement, while this torch has a faith requirement. And yes, this also scales well with just investing into faith, so you can combine it with incantations, just like the Sentry's Torch. The main selling point is definitely the sleep buildup though, as you can potentially punish your enemy after triggering sleep. This is something that can give you a little edge in PvP. One extra hit is one extra hit after all. Something else to keep in mind is that this torch actually has higher base sleep buildup and AR than Sentrina's sword even at the 75 point stat investment level for example. However, you can power stance straight swords, which happens to be a really powerful power stance, whereas you must just swing one torch. It's like just holding one Centrina sword, not very strong and easily defeated if your opponent knows the basics. Furthermore, Centrina sword's weapon art increases its sleep buildup by 70. Well, the summary for this video is short, sweet, and simple. If performance is what you're searching for, avoid torches. They really don't have a redeeming quality to them other than the fact that they glow brilliantly in the dark. If you do still want to use torches as your main weapon for raw style points though, I'd recommend the Sentrinas for PvP. And the Sentries has the highest AR, while the Ghost Flame allows you to combine the torch with Glintstone Staffs. Like and subscribe. Please buy my book to support the channel, and you can also ask me for any topic to cover. See you next time.